You're watching local coverage you can count on. This is Wayne 15 News, first at five. One of the largest school districts in the state has a new leader. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dirk Rowley. And I'm Tara Brantley. The new superintendent of Fort Wayne Community Schools will take the place of Dr. Wendy Robinson, who is retiring next month. The new super was named about 30 minutes ago. Wayne 15's Brianna Brownlee was there for the big announcement. She joins us live with the board's pick. Bree, who was chosen? Not quite as cool as it's been, is it? Today is a warm day. Dirk Terry, yes, we are here with the new superintendent for Fort Wayne Community Schools. I am here with Dr. Mark Daniel. How are you doing? I'm doing marvelous. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with us. So, of course, you know, you before here, you were actually in Illinois as a superintendent. And I do know the board earlier said that, you know, your experience is what, what helped them make this decision. Can you just briefly explain just, just your background? Sure. Well, I've been fortunate enough to be in uh, superintendent of a very large district. And as such, Fort Wayne's a large district. And with that, you have to be able to manage multiple things, but you also have to rely on a cabinet. I think you learn that by being a superintendent in a large district. And I also think that you need to be abreast of what's happening in regards to the educational trends and what it will best fit the system that you're working in. And you do that through experience, and I think that's one of the reasons why the board chose me. And of course, I mentioned Illinois, but you actually have roots in Indiana. You went to Northside High School. So how does it feel to be back in Allen County? I'm thrilled, to be honest. I really am thrilled. Um, so many friends here. I know it's uh, my family is uh, relieved that <laughs> they're moving to a place that they're, they are familiar with. Um, also, though, I take intense pride in Fort Wayne. And I think school systems are building blocks of economic development, of bringing new uh, families to our community. And we want to be part of that. So that's why I'm thrilled. And of course, you know, these are inter um, interesting times right now, you know, with the pandemic. So how was that, you know, vying for this job and, you know, during the midst of a pandemic? Well, it was uh, bizarre, to be <laughs> honest, because, again, these were virtual interviews. and. You know, as I said earlier, 80 to 90 percent is nonverbal communication. You don't get to see that. So you're truly speaking to people in a distance. And uh, I can understand why students are struggling with remote learning because that was, it's similar. And it makes a difference when you're in person. And that's why I always will be an advocate for public schools and teachers. Um, they do an unbelievable job every day. And that one to one, that in person is so critical. So, again, Fort Wayne Community Schools is very fortunate to have outstanding teachers, administrators. We want to continue that. Um, and surely, uh, surely, you know, that vote on June 2nd to help with the referendum would be a blessing too. And also, speaking of the whole um, legacy, of course, you're following a major legacy with Dr. Wendy Robinson. How do you feel, you know, following in the, um, such, you know, big footsteps? Again, you don't replace a person such as Dr. Robinson with 17 years as superintendent and another 23 plus as, a, as an educator in Fort Wayne Community Schools. You merely stand on her shoulders, and I'll be turning to her for advice at times as well. well thank you so much, Dr. Danny. But yes, we'll have more coming up. Reporting, Brianna Brownlee, Wayne 15 News. All right, all lanes of I-69 are back open after a crash this afternoon involving a semi. It happened near the southbound 307 mile marker near the Bass Road overpass around 3. Once Wayne 15 arrived, we found a car blocking both the outside and middle lanes, which left only the inside lane open for traffic. One person taken to the hospital in life-threatening condition. No word on what caused that crash. A Huntington County construction worker is dead after falling into Salamone Lake. It happened this morning on State Road 105 at the Salamone Lake Bridge. Investigators told Wayne 15 the man was working on scaffolding when it broke and he fell into 39 feet of water. He was wearing the required harness but was not tethered at the time. An autopsy is set for tomorrow. A car ended up on its top after a crash this afternoon. Police called the St. Joe Center Road around 3 in the afternoon. Once they arrived, they found the vehicle, as you can see, flipped upside down. No word on what caused that crash. Two people were in the car at the time and were not hurt badly. Three teens are recovering after an off-road vehicle crash on the city's north side yesterday. That happened around 6 in the 1400 block of Tulip Tree Road. Indiana conservation officers say the three teens lost control after hitting a patch of gravel. The driver overcorrected to cause the vehicle to flip. A 14 and 15-year-old were treated for minor injuries on the scene. A 16-year-old taken to a Fort Wayne hospital. Authorities say the teens were not wearing helmets. 
Early in-person voting is up and running in Allen County. It began today and runs through June 1st. The election board expects a low turnout due to the pandemic. Wayne 15's Kai Torque joins us from the Grand Wayne Center with more. Early voting is pacing slower than usual this year with voters only trickling in. Allen County Director of Elections Beth Delug says this is because so many people have already voted by mail-in ballot. So we've had over 38,000 mail ballots and we only had 3,000 in the last presidential primary. So that's a tremendous response for mail ballots. So we don't expect early voting to be as big as it usually is, but we um, do anticipate several thousand people to vote. For those that are coming in to early vote in person, they should feel safe. The election board staff is using face masks and shields, gloves, and plexiglass barriers to maintain safety. I made the, the conscious decision that I was going to come down and vote in person, uh, knowing that I would uh, do my best to follow the, the protocols. And uh, when I arrived here, I was, was very pleasantly surprised in that uh, they chose, the election board chose a space, or a, a very large space, uh, where they can practice the social distancing uh, without uh, too much problem. And they had other precautions such as the uh, handing out of gloves. So I felt they have it well protected in the, the whole process. For election day next Tuesday, the board has consolidated the 116 polling locations down to just 25. Because of the huge amount of mail-in ballots, they'll need extra time to count votes. They expect to release results on Wednesday or Thursday. For more information on early voting or next week's election, go to our website, wayne.com. Reporting in Fort Wayne, Kytor K, Wayne 15 News. Now, your first weather from the live Doppler 15 Fury Weather Center. So we made it to our first 90 of the year with our high temperature reaching 91. Not a record though, that record 93, which has been on the books since 1911. Right now we have temperatures in the mid to upper 80s across the region, 85 in Fort Wayne, 88 in Defiance, 85 in Columbia City, 86 in Bluffton. We're getting a 77 from Angola, some scattered rain and thunderstorms nearby that neck of the woods. As we continue through the evening here, some additional periods of rain and thunderstorms possible, nothing widespread, but we could hear some thunder, see some lightning and get some good downpours for the areas that experience the rain. Here's a look at your hour by hour forecast from our Wayne weather app at 6 o'clock, 86 at 8, 84 at 10 will be down in the upper 70s. Temperatures overnight drop only to the 60s and some more summertime warmth coming our way, but not as hot as recent days. I'm back with the latest numbers in just a few minutes. Nicholas, thanks. The threat of the novel coronavirus led city leaders to shut down public pools this summer. But there are some private pools that do plan to open. Wayne 15's Angelica Robinson tells us about one of them. A warm day like today, many people would want nothing more than to take Thank a dip you. in the pool or lay poolside. And if you're one of those people, all hope is not lost. There are still several private pools in the area that plan to open for the summer. Poco Pool is one of them. Saturday, May 30th is the big day and workers are already preparing for opening. The pool plans to operate at full capacity on the 4th of July, but until then it will operate at 50%. With public pools closed for the summer, the membership at Poco Pool has doubled from this time last year. Visitors will have to swim at their own risk and do their best to manage social distancing. Lifeguards will not wear face coverings, but other workers will. Cleaning stations will be set up throughout the pool area, and someone will be on duty at all times to clean up high traffic areas. The chemicals used in pool water are believed to inactivate the virus in the water. People are still at risk, just like if they went to Lowe's or Kroger. Um, there's a risk anywhere that you're going out in public. But the CDC says that chlorine kills coronavirus. And also you're better off out in fresh air than you are inside. For more information, head to our website, wayne.com. Reporting in Fort Wayne, Angelica Robinson, Wayne 15 News. All right, coming up on First at Five, this is where I'm supposed to sing. It's fun again at the YMCA uh, with a few changes. Many ways, though, to have a good time. You're doing the moves right now when your number one news at five returns. Local coverage you can count on continues with Tara Brantley and Dirk Rowley. You're watching Wayne 15 News, first at five. For the first time since mid-March, the YMCA of Greater Fort Wayne has opened its doors so people can work out. As people return, they'll find new restrictions to help limit the spread of COVID-19. Wayne 15's Adam Salarzik explains. Greater Fort Wayne YMCA's are now back open to members, but with more safety precautions in place. 
YMCA of Greater Fort Wayne includes locations in Allen, Wells, and Whitley counties. All of these membership branches open Tuesday. When you walk in, staff members will be wearing masks, and throughout the facilities, there will be towels and disinfectant provided so that members can wipe down the equipment before and after use. With this being the first day back open, participation was limited, but that was to be expected based on other branches across the country. Uh, we're at about 20% participation compared to normal, and we expect that to grow a little bit throughout the day. Uh, most wise around the country that have been open for two or three weeks are seeing about 25 to 40 percent of their normal use. And that's probably what we're, we'll top out today. Um, we're tracking to be at about 30, 35 percent of our normal use. As for pools, it depends on the branch location and they will be opening in accordance with guidelines and restrictions that have capacity limitations. As restrictions are lifted, more activities will become available and they'll be updating their schedules across the area. You'll find more information on Wayne.com. Reporting from Jackson Lehman, YMCA, Adam Salarzik, Wayne 15 News. Pools looking pretty good. The warmest day of the year so far. How long will the hot streak continue? Nicholas has a check of your 10 day forecast next. The Northeast Indiana Water Trails invites you to the fifth annual Pedal Paddle Play. This year features new opportunities to discover Northeast Indiana's land and water trails at your own pace, all while maintaining a safe social distance. And you could win some great prizes, including a complete. Local coverage you can count on continues with Chief Meteorologist Nicholas Ferrari's Live Doppler 15 Fury forecast. So a lot of heat the past few days with the pinnacle coming today with our high temperature hitting 91, well above our average of 75. What a difference a week makes. You know, we were shivering last week. <laughs> Not this week, uh-uh. And we're humid, too. We can't forget about that. The forecast has really taken a summer-like turn. Now, our first 90-degree day, is it rare to have it in May? Well, yes, in some ways it is definitely early. However, it does happen. It last happened back in 2018 and 2017. As we look out in the 10-day forecast, no returns to 90s, but plenty of warmth coming our way. Our current temperature, 85. Winds from the south-southeast at 13 miles per hour. We have a temperature of 88 in Auburn and Defiance, 84 in Van Wert, 85 in Decatur, Bluffton at 88, Hartford City at 89. You look to the north, you see Angola at 75. That's because they have some clouds and rain nearby. And when you get the scattered rain and thunderstorms, as some of you will see tonight, you'll see your temperatures quickly cool. Currently, we have that temperature in the mid-80s as the evening wears on at 7 o'clock, still in the mid-80s in many spots by 9. We'll be down to the low 80s with the winds lightening up. On the muggy meter, we've been humid today. We're going to be in the humid category tomorrow and on Thursday. But then, by the end of the week, a cold front comes on through. Some less humid air moves in and the muggy meter goes back down to comfortable. Here tonight, well, we have scattered rain and some thunderstorms all across the Midwest. Right now, the activity across northeast Indiana and northwest Ohio is pretty limited, although we do have some areas getting some uh, decent downpours at times. We go down to the southeast. You can see a thunderstorm getting ready to move into Adams County, south of Decatur. As this continues to progress to the northwest, well, it very well could affect Decatur within the course of the next hour. Now, nothing severe here, but like I said, some gusty winds at times and some heavy downpours certainly possible if that uh, area of heaviest rain does hold together. We also have some rain and thunderstorm activity heading into Williams County, Ohio. There's that scattered rain between Angola and LaGrange. Now as we continue through the evening, we hold this rain chance and we see more similar rain chances over the upcoming days with our warmth and humidity lingering. So future cast tonight shows us that scattered rain activity. The temperatures just gradually on their way down. We remain warm overnight. Our lowest temperature is only down in the mid 60s by morning. 66 our low temperature in Fort Wayne. Then tomorrow we have some scattered clouds in place. We also have those periods of rain. They will be scattered yet again. Many dry times tomorrow. Our best rain chances come into play as we warm on up and we get into the afternoon and evening. Tomorrow's temperatures will top out right near that 80 mark, not as hot as today. At 9 in the morning, 71. At 11, 74. At 1, 76. At 3, 78. Then at 5 o'clock, our temperature 81 degrees. Now you can see how there is that scattered rain chance for many spots as we get into the afternoon, and that's why you see the temperatures in some areas in the 70s. Now, for tomorrow evening, some scattered rain still around. We see that rain chance subside a little bit come late evening, but by early morning, another chance at rain on Thursday. Then on Thursday, those periods of scattered rain and maybe a few thunderstorms during the day. Here's a look at the next 10 days. Some rain does linger on Friday, but it's gone by the weekend. Temperatures for the weekend much cooler. Highs near 70 both days and Sunday is the potential to only top out in the upper 60s. On Monday, 71 for June 1st and Tuesday, 79, then back to the 80s come next Wednesday. Next week, our only rain chance is a slight one, and that comes on Thursday. 
That's your forecast. Stay tuned. More news right after this. This week on the Two Minute Money Plan, we are talking about the post-Memorial Day trading week as America tries to get back to business. Financial advisor Greg Reynolds, Reynolds Wealth Management, joins us every Tuesday on First at Five. And Greg, a lot of people obviously focused on the economy reopening and, and uh, getting back to as close to normal as we can get, but a lot of reports will be coming out to show us just where we've been. Absolutely. We'll be getting Beige Book this week and a number of other data sets that will be quite impactful, I think, in terms of markets. Because we don't know exactly where we've been. Everyone has felt it, but uh, this will show us. It will. So, obviously, we started the, the trading day today, post-Memorial Day, uh, on a very high note um, on the back of it, potential improvements regarding coronavirus technology uh, so that you know we're getting that side of the equation is going to be that pull and tug so to speak with the economic data then that's going to be coming out uh, so those things need to be looked at very carefully and balanced together as investors formulate a plan for for moving forward and that balance you say is very important it absolutely is so uh, while we might have some uh, improvement on the virus front or vaccine technology uh, you know the data is is going to be quite horrible probably from the rearview mirror standpoint. Uh, I'm more focused on the forward going comments uh, though that in, in terms of that data, I think that'll impact my opinion in terms of the investment landscape more than, than the historical back data that we'll be getting. So what would your big takeaway this week, uh, week be? Well, I think that the big takeaway, obviously, this week is that all of this data matters, but we really need to focus uh, on th what's coming down the road. So until we start to see a major uptick in employment, not just a deceleration of people losing jobs, uh, but an actual stabilization and then an uptick in terms of, of re-employment. I, I think that then all of the rest of the data is much more muted, comparatively speaking. So I think that we just don't know how bad it could get on the economic side until we start to see the real turn in jobs. At that point, I'll feel more comfortable saying the worst is behind us and we can focus then on, on continued reopening. Great information as always, Greg. Thank you for that. For more information about making sound financial decisions, you can contact Greg Reynolds at Reynolds Wealth Management. Next Tuesday on First at Five, we'll tackle another topic on the Two Minute Money Plan. And be sure to join me tomorrow morning along with Alyssa, Greg, and Michael on First News between 5 and 7 a.m. We'll be right back. Twenty twenty has been a crazy year. But even through the roughest patches, you pushed through and you made it. How do we know? Because you're here at the finish line. You did it. And we the H and H S today crew have been along right beside you all the way. Even though the school year wasn't completely in person, we all made it through and adapted to the changes. We never dealt with a year quite like this. But everyone has done a fantastic job of persevering and making this a great 2019-2020 school year. And what a great year it was. So we, the H&HS Today crew, would like to thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for your continued viewership of the show. After all, we do it for you. Thank you for making this a great year. Even though the seniors have missed out on some major events and opportunities, we all pulled together as one and finished. Thank you for your hard work. Some of us will see each other again next year. Others, we won't. So this is H&HS Today crew signing off. Go do great things in life. Have a great summer. Have a great summer. Have a great summer. And have a good summer, boys. Have a great summer. Have a great summer. Have a great summer. And go, go Lakes. Big Rick out. Look at those budding broadcasters. We better watch <laughs> out. Uh, tomorrow, 81. On Thursday, 79. Some periods of scattered rain and thunderstorms then. And Friday could see a few raindrops as well. See you at 6.